Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Originals and I've brought forward to you a very conceptual problem which is slightly on the tougher side and also contains a trap if you are not very careful or if you are not well versed with the in-depth understanding of rotation. Okay, so let's go forward and look at the formal wording of the question. So this is a uh, objective type question with one or more than one correct options. There are four options given at the bottom of the question. So you need to read the information and then solve for the uh, required options. Okay, so let's move ahead. Uh, you want to, to give it a try with an unbiased mind without me reading into it. I, I'll suggest you pause the video here. Give it a try for five to six minutes and then you can come back for the conceptual explanation of the question along with the proper solution. And uh, please make sure you watch the video till the end because I will be continuing uh, the solution of this with uh, some food for thought for you people. And uh, in this particular uh, situation, I would ask you some questions for which you would uh, I'll request you to comment your views below okay so that is first part and second part at the end of the video i'll also give you a practice problem on this particular scenario okay so let's move ahead a uniform circular rigid disc of mass m and radius r is placed with its plane horizontal on a horizontal rough surface or a floor after giving it a spin about its axis uh, with an angular velocity of omega naught. Consider a differential mass element of concentric annular ring of radius r and width dr as shown. Okay, this is the top view. Consider its moment of inertia to be di about its axis of rotation. The torque on it due to kinetic friction from the floor about its axis is d tau. At an instant of slowing down, its angular acceleration has a magnitude alpha. Okay, then at this instant, mark the correct options. Assume uniform pressure of normal reaction on the disc. Okay, so the options are integration of all the d taus, which he described as kinetic friction torques, should be equal to integration of all di's of these differential elements uh, into alpha, where integration is done over the entire disc. Then uh, we remove the integral and write the d tau is equal to di into alpha, that forms option B. Component of resultant of all forces acting on one half of the disc along the diameter of that half is given by this expression okay so that's c option the option number d is the net force of friction acting on one half of the disc is this expression okay so as i said if you want to give it a try now just pause the video try it for five to six minutes and do come back and stay till the end so that we also discuss the practice problems okay so let's move ahead with the options a and b okay so what i've done is on a lot of things are on the screen so just follow my lead where i'm pointing i am where i'm narrating just concentrate on that okay right so on the right side i have drawn a tentative diagram of the disc i have given it a rotation omega is the instantaneous angular velocity as you could see it's clockwise and i've drawn a differential element that he suggested in that particular question okay right now, if I draw the free body diagram of the differential element down, you could see that that red colored small strip. Because of the clockwise omega of that and floor underneath, there will be a frictional force acting tangentially at every place in the anti-parallel direction to the speed of these elements. And this is a distributed force, okay, right? So you could see by symmetry, the vector sum of these forces is zero. That means the net force of friction vectorially is zero, but the torque due to friction won't be zero. And that's what is enabling this element to slow down. Okay. So in order to solve for this torque and look at options A and B, let's be very careful and try to first of all, write the differential equation and then look at the integral form of that. Okay. So let's go to the top of the screen. Torque due to kinetic friction on the differential element d tau that he mentioned. So the d tau is not the net torque, it's torque only due to friction as mentioned in the question. Okay, is given by the value of d tau should be mu into dmg into r. So if the dmg of this is the normal reaction, then mu times of normal reaction is a kinetic friction. All of the distributed kinetic friction is acting at a distance r, which can be considered as the lever arm of that force. Okay, so it's a cross product that I have done here 
and the value of the torque is along the axis okay right hand thumb rule and then the value of dmg can be written as sigma which is the mass per unit area of the disc which you can substitute at the end into 2 pi r dr into gr i just kept it as it is now you also know that the di which is the moment of inertia of the ring form is mass into r square okay so where r is the radius at that place so these are the two d tau and di separately done we all if you try to write integration of all d tau's is i alpha because it's a rigid disk and formulate this solution you get an alpha for the disk which is he didn't ask that i just wanted to uh, give take you into confidence that's why i'm writing it here okay so alpha is given by 4 mu g by 3r for the entire disk and i've integrated only frictional torques here so let's try to understand this but if i actually write d tau d tau is equal to di into alpha and do the uh, manipulation with these two remember this is integral form and this is the differential form if i forcibly write the value of d tau is equal to di into alpha from the top things and divide these two you could clearly see that mu dm into g into r if i equate it to dm into r square into alpha i'll not get the same alpha as i got from the integration which tells us that one of these two expressions is definitely wrong at least okay right so why is it that when i take the torque of the friction on differential element and equating or using tau is equal to i alpha equation the alpha value is different and when i integrate all those torques and use i alpha the value of alpha is different you could clearly see that the 4 by 3 factor won't come if i directly use from here okay so let me reveal the secret i think some of you might have already found out that idea so d tau integration of d tau is integration of di into alpha alpha can be brought out of integral because it's a rigid body right all of the elements have same alpha but you could see that the d tau is not equal to di into alpha so the answer to this let's move on to the next slide is the fact that each of these ring parts not only has the frictional torque but also it is in contact with the neighboring rings right and that contact force causes a reactional torque on each of these rings so the torque will be of two forms on each ring the green color torque is d tau symbolically he wrote that d tau as the d tau fk i could have written the subscript here but in the question he has used this symbol along with that there will be a reactional torque just to prove my point imagine these are actually not attached rings and these rings are separated out okay so they are uh, separately placed at different different uh, positions and they are rotated those rings will be having a different alpha as compared to the alpha that the entire disk has which means if this ring was left on its own it would have had a different alpha so in order to make this ring move with the alpha that i got as 4 by 3 mu g by r the ring in its neighborhood will apply another extra force or a reaction torque it will try to take it along with it that is the result of this reactional torque of rigid contact forces that i am talking about between successive differential elements which you should acknowledge then how come when you are integrating you are getting the correct answer so when you try it each differential element actually you should write d tau plus this missing part and but when you integrate you, you you are doing this expression for the next differential element using newton's third law this d tau r on the next one would be acting in the reverse direction right so equal and opposite forces produce at the same place equal and opposite torques and that's the secret when you integrate that this only survives and integration of all those reactional torques on summation of all the elements will come out to be zero that's why your option a is correct and in uh, if you are committing a mistake of not taking it the mistake actually gets cancelled okay so summation of reactional torques is zero for a rigid body okay so they become internal torques or something but if you take individual differential element you can't consider that to be zero so that's the secret so option a is correct and option b is actually wrong okay so i hope that is fine let's go to c and d so the option c was all about the um uh, the net force acting along the diameter of a right half let's say i take the right half he said any half i take the right half so we already saw the value of alpha is 4 mu g by 3r we all agreed to that so if i draw only the right half fbd 
you know, look at the right side of the screen. I'm pointing only right half FBD. Uh, net force is always related to mass into acceleration of center of mass. And you'd see that center of mass itself is going in a non-uniform circular motion of radius X, let's say, where for a disk, you should know X value is 4R by 3 pi. So the, centri uh, the centripetal acceleration would be marked as X omega square and tangential acceleration will be marked as X alpha. Okay, right. Uh, uh, if this is rotating in clockwise sense, this X alpha would be this way. If it's anti-clockwise, it would be the downward direction. I, it doesn't matter. It is just asked magnitude here. Okay, so value of AT is equal to X alpha. Uh, once you substitute alpha is 4 by 3 uh, from the first page and X is 4 R by 3 pi, you end up getting 16 mu G by 9 pi. So F net only along the diameter is called by caused by this X alpha and that should be please be careful it's only half of the mass so m by 2 into 80 and that's a cause of a silly mistake that you could commit okay so that term will become a 8 and that's why option c which was given with a 16 on the top is wrong okay just missing a factor of half is it a net force no because there will be another force component uh, which is uh, perpendicular to diameter which he had not asked in the question okay right so it's only the component of net force along the diameter who provides all these net forces on this particular half disk please understand there will be two uh, provisions one is from the frictional force and second one is again a rigid contact will be maintained between these two halves that also tries to provide a force okay so be, please be careful it could be a future question okay let's move to option number d which is also very interesting in option d he talks about what is the net value of frictional force on one of the halves okay so a lot of things on the screen just follow my lead so imagine i draw the right half set pd and take a differential ring element, semicircular ring of radius small r. Remember, discuss capital R radius. And if I draw the frictional forces acting on each of this part because the uh, ring is rotating, let's say, in angular velocity omega anti-clockwise, these frictional forces distributed in a clockwise sense. Can you see them on the blue color here? Right. Now, if I want to integrate these frictional forces, I further divide them into even smaller differential element. Can you see? I drawn radius vectors here and I take a small chunk out of it, zoom it, and it looks like this. Okay, so on this part, which is somewhere here, the frictional force is acting in this direction. It's a tangential force. I think I can say that this is so small that this line, this line can be considered as a straight line and that the tangent vector can be considered as dl bar, right? dl bar is the small width that you have and the radial width I consider as dr. So if someone asks you, what is the value of the area of this, which we will be using later, it will be considered as dl into dr. So keep that in mind. Now the value of the fk total vector bar on this entire disk, I will see it as double integration. One, I have to integrate all the forces on the ring element. And then further, I have to integrate many such rings that will be existing from the small r value of zero to capital R, I hope. You get this point. So what do you, how do you write that? You write mu into dm into g's of all these rings. And what is the value of dm? dm is the sigma, which is again mass per unit area, into the dl into dr. I have to integrate over dls and also drs. Now, here's the trick. Since this is a vector that I wrote, you should all understand that the value of this vector direction can be written directly as dl bar. I know it is a weird way of writing vector in between the two scalars. You could have put the dl outside, but I wanted it to be in this fashion so that you can recognize that I have written fk bar in the direction of the tangential vector dl bar. It helps me out. Now, what I'll do is I'll separate out the double integrals uh, out. Mu and sigma and g are uniform. so they'll come out and this integral dl bar will be first integrated this green color integrates over that so what does that mean integration of dl bars is like integrating all the small small path length vectors that you are going on the right side of the figure so it's like integrating displacement vectors okay what is the sum of all displacement vectors from here to here it would be a displacement vector starting from here and in the downward direction so can i now write this integration of dl bar as 2 r bar where 2 r bar is the diameter of that okay so i hope you get the point so that makes it a very simple now integral of small r from 0 to capital r so the entire thing converts itself into blue these constants come out and then you are integrating so that's why the net frictional force would be along the diameter okay right so because of the vector integration so once i know 
the direction, I'll remove the bars on both sides and I'll do the scalar integration of 2R dr 0 to capital R. And sigma I substitute as m by pi R square and I end up getting Fk is equal to mu mg by pi, which is in the direction along the diameter. Okay, so I hope you understood. And uh, there are many other ways of solving the same problem by taking the uh, half rings and everything. But I just wanted to uh, represent it in a different way. You could also do it for a ring solution first. I right? imagine there is a separate problem where ring is rotating. Get a formula or an answer for that and use that formula for this. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to show everything in one integral and that's why I took forward the double integration. Okay, so now here comes the food for thought. Right, let me mark the answers for you people, therefore, and then we'll move to the foot for thought. So answer A is correct, D is wrong, um, because I told you about the reactional torques, and C option is wrong because it misses a factor of half, and the D option is perfectly fine, and the direction of that friction would be in the downward direction. Okay, so let's move forward. With this knowledge of the vector integration that I introduced you to people, uh, uh, can you answer these two questions? Okay, so comment your views below in the comment section. Right? I would be really happy to read through your comments. Can you calculate the torque of friction using the vector integration approach? In the first page, we calculated the torque using the complete ring approach right remember you calculated the value of this torque right using these rings so in any future problem any arbitrary shaped object is given and you want to calculate the torque of friction because if it, it's spinning on a flat floor can you use the vector integration approach that i used i just borrowed the picture from the previous page so can you use this to calculate torque remember we use this to calculate force now the thing is about torque and while you do that can you think of where the point of application of friction for the half disk should be placed? It's a very interesting result that you'll end up getting. The point of application should be placed at that place, which gives you the correct value of the torque. You cannot place it at any point that you wish to when it comes to the torque calculation. So think about these two, comment your views below. And the practice problem is a problem that is similar in sense and uses a logic that I've explained so detailed manner is the problem from path point finder in rotation chapter check your understanding 23 i think now with this understanding if you have gone through the video very carefully you'll ace this problem very easily so in case you find it difficult just let me know i'll provide the solution for the uh, same problem in the upcoming video okay so i hope you loved this video and there are other series that are running through in the channel which are very um, informative in terms of uh, physics concepts that generally textbooks don't deal with a uh, lot of brilliant students usually get doubts and they don't know whom to ask so i have tried to compile as much as possible well within my capabilities to present to you those different situations which improve your uh, problem solving skills along with the in-depth concept analysis so please check out the links of all these playlists curated properly in the description below and in case you have liked the video, please do like it. YouTube algorithm will push my video if you like it to more people and I do end up getting more subscribers and enough motivation to produce such beautiful videos in the future. Please do share it with your friends and teachers and WhatsApp groups and Telegram groups and try to promote my channel and I'll be really indebted to you. Okay, so thank you very much. Stay, me, stay with me for uh, the next video and see you there.